Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is just a little tutorial in which I'm going to put this ball in the centre of the screen to start off with and I'm going to randomise the direction of it. So this, this should be pretty simple. To position the ball we can use the same technique that we used for the bat here. So if I um, oh, let's just come out of that log D actually. So if I go into my ball class here and I right click and I go to source override implement methods, we can override the init method from sprite. And I'll call the superclass method. And now we've got access to the size of the ball bitmap and the size of the screen. So I can say set X and set X will be get screen height over 2 minus get rect dot center x no that's wrong isn't it it should be get screen width over 2 minus get rect dot center x so same logic as for the bat we um, this this in itself will position the top left hand corner in the center of the screen and then we need to subtract half the width of the graphic to actually get the center in the center of the screen and of course for y it's pretty much the same so I'm going to say set y set y get screen height over 2 and get rect dot my, um, minus get rect dot center y that should put the ball directly in the center of the screen and to set the direction of it, I'd like to set the direction randomly to start with because at the moment I'm setting it to 1 and in fact let's just go to sprite and take out these initial values for the coordinate and I'll put them to 0 and uh, so it should be pretty obvious if the user of these classes which is me in this case forgets to set the position of them and I don't want to initialize the direction to one. Actually, in fact, come to think of it, in sprite.java we don't even need to do that because private, uh, because instance variables are initialized anyway by default, so they would be zero if left to themselves. So let's just leave them. Now I won't initialize the direction, so they will be set to zero by themselves. But the direction should be the one or minus one, and for x, one would mean heading to the right, and minus one would mean heading to the left and we use it down here to multiply the speed and the time elapsed to actually get the final direction so all the directions do is say whether well, the direction is kind of uh, in, in the direction of in the increasing coordinate value or decreasing so the direction should be either minus one or one and the question is how can we get a, ra a random how can we either get one or minus one at random and to do that we can use the random class so in ball here now where, where would a good place for this be I can I can do this on the constructor I suppose so I don't really need to do it in init but actually init is a perfectly good place as well so let's do it there let's say random random equals new random this is a built-in Java class which we can also use of course in Android and I'm going to say that direction x direction x equals random dot next int and random has this method next int which it can take an integer and we're, we're going to pass it two, and it will give you a random integer up to but not including that value so if you say next in three let's say you will get three random values you know it could be the random value will be one of three possible values nor one or two so if we pass it two we'll get one of two possible random values which will be naught or one if we multiply that by two the random values will now be naught or two because naught times two is still naught and one times two is two and if we then subtract 1, that maps 0 and 2 to minus 1 and 1. So this gives us exactly what we want. This will give us either minus 1 or plus 1. And I'll do the same thing with y. 
and direction y equals another random number, um, either minus 1 or plus 1. And that should be it. So I'll just run this. And now the ball should appear initially in the centre of the screen, and it should have a random direction. Let's try to go really quickly to the screencast. So hopefully we can catch it starting up. And it hopefully will be on its way. And while we're waiting for that, uh, let me tell you what I'm thinking of doing next, which is um, it would it would be quite good if we make the player, the player's bat, be controllable by touching the screen. So probably we'll do that next. So there we go. The ball was seemed to be in the centre of the screen, and we'll take it for granted that the random direction worked, although you could start it up a few times if you want to check that, and you'll see that sometimes it's going to the left, sometimes to the right, and sometimes up and sometimes down. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, happy coding.